I'm sure I've said it on this channel before, but I don't game on mobile devices intentionally and on purpose because I just would never be seen ever again. And occasionally that does mean that a mobile game comes out that I have FOMO of, and Holder.io is certainly one of those. It's been out for a few years, it was billed as reverse Katamari game, and I love the Katamari series. And it's a really good descriptor of what Holder.io is. Like Katamari, where you start off with a small ball and roll up things around the world, getting your ball bigger and bigger to roll up bigger things and score more points, Hole.io starts you off as a small little black hole rolling around the surface of a world, swallowing up anything that's on the surface that can fit down your hole. As you eat more, you get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you can swallow up bigger and bigger things and score more points as a result. The couple of twists with Hole.io though, is that it adds in a unique competitive nature because you're always battling against seven other AI opponents who are also trying to swallow up as much as possible and you're battling for top leaderboard in a two minute race basically to see who can eat up the most possible. The beauty of this is that you spawn in different locations every time that you play and some spawn points are way better than others and more strategic, but also you can eat up each other so, whilst you're all maybe gunning towards eating up certain types of buildings or parks if you're in the city level, or maybe going for trees on the dinosaur island level, depends which level you've chosen, you'll have different things to go for. If you're all going to meet in the middle, the player with the biggest hole will eat up the smaller player, and that will A, give the bigger player points, but B, also the person that's been swallowed up will then have a penalty timer respawn. And yeah, it just costs you points, which costs you time, which means it's probably going to cost you positions on the leaderboard. There are six levels in the base game, and I felt a little bit icky over the fact that they then put out three other levels with some additional customizations attached as DLC packs as you go. Now I'm a sucker, and I knew that I was going to love this game, so I did buy the DLC packs. Two of them were decent, particularly the space one. I didn't like the farm DLC level at all. There's something really barren about that level where there's very little to actually eat. And so it just felt poorly built. I don't know, something just didn't click with me for that level specifically. However, the other eight levels all offer something unique and interesting and a little spin on level design. They also, whenever you play a level, come not just with that who can win and be best and eat the most, it also comes with an additional challenge. This might be like eat 12 astronauts, swallow up 40 trees, um, eat two T-Rexes, um, swallow the space station, something like that. And if you achieve that goal, you actually score more coins that you can then unlock customization things for than winning the game. <laughs> So there's kind of a dual purpose whenever you're playing and that kept me on my toes a bit more and kept me more engaged in Hold.io to play in longer periods of time. Some of the things that you can unlock with those coins and customizations are some additional power-ups such as your movement speed, um, being able to expand your hole earlier without having to eat everything and also like a shrink ray that is quite handy if you've got some of those uh, like goals like swallow 20 skyscrapers. Trigger that power up if it appears on your level and then quickly run to all of the big objects and they'll all shrink down and you'll be able to eat them with ease and joy. The other stuff alongside whole customization so that you can have like animals, rainbows, mean stuff um, and the selection is quite decent. There's this weird like collectible card extra where it's things like food, animals, um, I think Planets is on there, something like that. I didn't really get into the card stuff at all, and it's just annoying that a couple of the trophies, because I picked this up on PS4, are tied to that, because otherwise I think I'd be potentially done with this game a little bit earlier, rather than having to grind out the last couple of hours to make sure that I've collected all of the different cards that are available in the game. I've had great fun with Hold.io. It's real bite-sized, quick and dirty gameplay, that does emulate reverse Katamari, and I do think that that is still the best description of this game, because it is absolutely true, but it doesn't have that sheer longevity and variety of tactical things that you can do, and just the plethora of things that you can roll up. This is a really distilled down uh, Katamari formula, and as a result, it's not going to give you like 50 million hours of gameplay time, it's not going to 
be one of those games that you're going to spend like hours at a time playing. But it works really well as a quick 10 to 15 minute blast. Park it, come back to it in a week or so's time, do it again, and it feels fresh and fun for that period of time. So yeah, thumbs up from me. I'm glad that it's come to console. Very happy to buy this type of game because I think it's a great little spin on Katamari. And if you haven't picked it up so far because you don't mobile game too, now seems like the best time to do it. Take care. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference, and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.